All right, guys. I'm gonna ask y'all. I'm gonna start off with a question. So raise your hand if you know half of these people up here. All right. Um, give me things that they all have in common. Famous, rich. I don't think Tom is rich. But you know what they all have in common? They all have felt before. Steve Jobs was fired from his own company. Tom can never catch Jerry. Michael Jordan didn't even make his high school basketball team. So when I was doing this project about the failures, I was like, why do people see failures as a, such a negative way? How come they don't see failure as a motivation or something they should like overcome? So I, when I was doing this project, I was talking to my colleagues. I was like, hey, what should I do for this project? And they were like, Nelson, you should put a piece of paper and just write the wall of failures and let individuals write about it. And I was like, all right, let me do that. And every, I just told people to write their failures or their, what they're going through right now or what they have before. And it was interesting because every other day I would go check and there was four things that they all had in common. It was either relationships, business, communication, or academics. But today I have none of those because today I'm gonna show you the failure of preparation and presentation because I didn't make my project today. I forgot, so, and they told me I have like 18 minutes, but I only planned for 15. So for like the next three minutes, I'm gonna just stand, stand here and wait it out. How come no one goes outside the red circle? <laughs> What's up? What's your name? <laughs> you, got, you, you got any plans tonight? Want to hang out? No? Okay. It's okay. I'm playing, guys. I have an actual project. Let's start. So I'm going to start with, off with graphs. So this is, my, all my graphs have been very, very detailed. And this is the amount of people who have failed. So you see in the blue, 100% of people have failed, right? Some people have failed to brush their teeth, test, and things like that. And from a survey that I did, my next graph after being with the best statistician that I could see, our AP statistics teacher, Mr. Collins, I was like, hey, can you help me? And he was like, yes. And this is almost near perfect, because look, this is what I found out. The more you fail, the more success you have. Simple as that, right? Okay, so to continue on. So let's start off with business. So basically with business, at a young age, I was having this conversation with my older brother. So this is how we went out. I got home, I walked to my room. I said, what's up, bro? And he walks by. And then I go back and I'm like, hey, bro, what are you doing? He's like, and he's talking about this amazing thing. He's like, oh my God, you know this thing right here, this thing, he goes on for like minutes. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, I'm talking about the pair of Jordans. And I'm like, what the, what are you talking about a pair of Jordans? And he was like, cause these are the best shoes coming out this week. And I was like, okay. Let me, let me do some research. So after I did some research, after this some research, five minutes later, I was hooked. I was like, wow, there's millions of people that collect sneakers and buy them and resell them. I should probably start doing this. So on January 4th, 2013, at the age of 12, I asked my grandma to please take me to the local mall and help me get the pair of shoes. So basically, I went to the local mall and I was in the first in line. Simple as that. I got there at nine, I was at six in the morning, I had like two hours to wait and I was chilling, right? But then I got the shoes, I was so excited, I was like, yes, yes, congrats, Nelson, you got this. And then I was walking to my grandma's car, this adult came up to me, he was seven feet tall and at that time I was like four or five, I was 12 and he was like 37, but, but it was okay, you know, he's like, hey, what do you got there? And with my voice I was like, uh, uh, just, just size eight. And he was like, and then he, was, he popped out this cash and he was like, I got $300. If you give me, I'll give you $300 if you sell me this pair right now. And I was like, oh, okay. So I got back in line and I was like, and I started talking to myself. I was like, do you know what you just got into? What happens if the money is fake? Like, I was like so nervous. I was going to go to the store and be like, hey, your, your $100 is fake. So... 
I was happy because at the end of the day, I got the pair of shoes and I went to my older brother. I was like, you know what? You know what? Look, I'm cooler than you because I got them and you didn't because you had to work. So, and then he, with these five words, he hurt me. <laughs> and now, like, ever since that day, I've been traumatized. And I don't know, like, for those, like, for five years later, like today, I have five words that will hurt you. And I'm going to do this publicly. All right, but to continue on, when he told me the next week's shoes are ready, I was like, what? This is a weekly thing? People actually do this? When there's one pair of shoes, I will buy, and I will resell for 100% or even 150% of the profit. And I'll be so excited. But sometimes they will release like seven pairs a week, and I couldn't get them all. So it was sad that week. But then it came back again, and it was interesting because they're all over. And during that time, I was making money. I made $400 one weekend, another weekend, $600. And I was taking, I was buying the best toys at that time. I was buying the best toys, and I was taking out my family to the best fine dining places I could afford. <laughs> and it was interesting. I was like, yes, I'm at the prime. I'm at the top. I could be the best. And then one week came, and I got this pair of shoes, the Jordan 3s. They were sitting one week after the release, and I got a size 12. That was the first issue. The next issue is I lost the receipt. So I couldn't even return them. And I sold them that day for $100 when they originally cost $180. So that's where I learned that failure is okay. Because from that moment, I learned that if I haven't failed at that moment, I wouldn't be the same person I am today. Ever since then, I have made more money than I, I would ever lose. So to continue on to my next story about academics. So the audience, raise your hand if you ever failed a quiz, a test online, or anything like that. Raise your hand. If you have your hand down, you're lying. <laughs> All right. So let's start off. So one day, I was, I was going to class. And my teacher was like, all of y'all, we have a test after lunch. So come back, be ready to take the test. And we were like, oh, what? What? When she said this? She told us that she said this yesterday. None of us remember. And during lunch, we were all like, hey, bro, you, you study? And he was like, no, I didn't study. And things went like that. But that day, I saw the most creative type of cheating. I saw like three different types of cheating. Well, let me discuss two, because I did them. I mean, my friends did them. Okay, so the first one was this. So during my test, our teacher watch, was watching us like a hawk. So from this point on, I'm gonna call her Mrs. Hawk. She would like go around, creep like this, go down, look around like that. She would stand on the table, look over, and things like that. And my friend had this bright idea. He was like, let me take two paper balls. Student A, he was like, let me take these two paper balls, one with the answers and one without it. And his plan was, to send it to student B. And guys, I'm sorry if you don't understand this. This might be a little bit confusing, but this is how they worked it out in lunch. I'm sorry if you don't understand. But basically, he's going to go from student A to student B with two paper balls. He's going to give him one, and he's going to throw away the other one, all right? So this went on. The teacher was like, all right, I don't see nothing wrong. But then he got caught because he did it three more times. They got caught, they both got zeros. And then this is the one that I did. I mean, my friends did. He was like, he was, they were writing for him and they were like, bro, I don't know the answer to this question. He was like, oh, I got a great idea. And then they told, they whispered the idea and they were like, wow, that's a great idea. So this is what that basically happened. They were like, whoops. They dropped both of their papers, simple as that. And then, they were like, and they were like, oh, let me pick it up. But they grabbed the other person's test, and they were like, oh, I know the answers. So I was like, oh, I picked up your test, my bad. And they did this 17 more times. <laughs> and, it's, and you know what happened at the end? We all got our test back, and we all passed, except for those two guys. <laughs> right? That's amazing. I'm just playing, guys. We all, we all failed. But we learned that from that time, we should start paying attention to class, study, and focus. So the next one I want to talk about is the failure of communication. So I was talking to my mom the other day, and she was like, man, I went to this drive through and they ruined my order. I asked for a chicken strips with french fries and two sides of gravy. You know what happened? You thought they forgot the gravy, right, the extra gravy? No, they forgot the whole chicken strip. 
And she was like, man, I just got home. I was waiting. I worked all day and things like that. And she was like, I was like, well, I don't know what you can do now. So she ordered a pizza that day. So the next one was, so you know prom season and graduation and everyone wants to look good for the camera? So everyone's getting these brand new haircuts and they were like, let me wait for four hours in line to get this fresh haircut. And the barber, and then usually something goes like this at the end. They'll be like, you like your haircut? And you'll be like, yes. But then you have that little thought in behind your head. Be like, am I paying for this? It's such a bad haircut. Like, why am I paying $40 for this haircut? Why am I even paying $40 for a haircut? And things like that start to go on. Now let me start on failure in relationships. So basically, there's two types of failure in relationships, either girlfriend, boyfriend, or family. Oh yeah, friendship or family. So let me show you a little text message between me and my little brother. So it started up like this, this was last year. And I text him, happy National Sibling Day. And then he hits me with this. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, what did I do wrong? And then the next day, I'm like, Hey, can you give me a glass of water or a cup of water or anything? I was hurt because I was like, what did I do to him to make him reach at this point? What, what, how much damage have I caused to this kid? <laughs> so next year came around, and I texted him this. And he said this. This is a huge improvement, guys. <laughs> at least he acknowledged that I was his sibling, right? It was great. I was happy. And then I asked him for this. <laughs> Man, I ate good that day. It was, I was so happy. I was like, yes, our bond is finally back together. But then I was looking at my phone the other day, and I saw these text messages. I mean, my friend sent me these text messages. They're not mine. All right? So basically, he was like, hey, Nelson, I need help with this girl because I have a crush on her. And I'm like, okay, oh, okay let me help you. And he sends her this message. And he got that back. <laughs> he was so hurt. And I'm like, bro, just l let her go. You deserve better, champ. But he went back and with a pickup line. <laughs> and I told him to cut it out, cut it out, bro, stop. And then she says, how do I block someone's number? And I told him, don't, don't talk back. And then he... And I told her, stop, stop texting. And then this went on for like a couple of days, and he didn't get the message. <laughs> and then it went for a couple of weeks. Surprisingly, it went for a month until he finally got the message a year later. <laughs> oh my God, I feel so sorry for him. I hope he's doing good. So, what I want you to get out from this is don't let failure be an obstacle or a barrier to your dreams. Let it be a catalyst. Because every time you have a fail that's anything, even the smallest things, hoping that you learn from it to reach that dreams of yours. Thank you.